Hi everyone, my name is Ella Scher and I am from Virginia Clean Cities. Going along with our mission at VCC, I am joined today by Mike Duffy, the University of Virginia's fleet manager. Mike's fleet has been recognized for its intense sustainability efforts through recognitions like the National Association of Fleet Administrators Top 100 Green Fleets, APA, which is formerly known as the Association of Physical Plant Administrators, Effective and Innovative Practice Award, and HOOS, that is H-O-O-S, Building Bridges Award from UVA President Jim Ryan, all awarded in 2022. Today, the UVA fleet paves the way towards a sustainable future alongside the university and through Mike's leadership. So you're fleet manager for the University of Virginia Facilities Management. For those unfamiliar, what does a typical day look like and also how did you get to your role? Well, thanks for this invitation, Ella. As a fleet manager, I started out over 30 years ago managing a fleet of equipment and vehicles and people at an equipment rental store. Today, fleet managers depend on technology, but they also depend on their teams. So making sure that our teams get trained is just as important as the vehicles get purchased correctly, maintained well. It's important to holistically embrace the entire culture. My day starts with getting there in the morning and it's never the same. I tell people I've got the greatest job in the world. I go to the <laughs> amusement park every day and it's always a challenge. There's days where it's more challenging than others, but at UVA Facilities Management, our team manages 365 assets. We have equipment, we have vehicles, we have trailers. All of them are to support the academic and health system. So whenever someone needs a wall painted or a light doesn't work, or if they have a problem with the plumbing, facilities gets called and they come in and their mission is to take care of those buildings. Our mission is to provide them transportation so that they can do their job well. That's a fantastic answer. And just an additional question to that would be, what initially drew you to your role? What sort of education did you have? I really didn't have an education background in fleet, but I had an experience in it very young. I was always taking everything apart. <laughs> and one of the great stories I have is my next door neighbor was the best diagnostic mechanic I'd ever known. And he caught me taking my mother's car apart and I couldn't get it to start after I put it back together. Oh, no. <laughs> and he came over, he stood there looking, asked me what I did, then he told me what was wrong and he left and made me fix what I did wrong and started me on that path of diagnostics. And from there, my passion grew to be around anything that was mechanical. Over time, I've completed all of the trainings that the National Association of Fleet Administrators offers. That's commonly known as NAFA. It's the largest non-for-profit fleet organization in the country. And they have courses on sustainability as well as asset management, remarketing. So there's many different disciplines that are involved within fleet. I take care of the purchasing of all of our new vehicles, as well as the repurposing where we sell them at auction. And again, this all requires a team, which is constantly changing. And my role is to promote them, to educate them so that they can go on and become more effective in their roles. That's fantastic. And it's interesting you say that you were just a builder at, at heart. At first, I think that that's really, really telling of the work that you do right now. My next question is, what is your fleet doing in the world of clean transportation? You already said the, the one element, transportation and getting people places and all of that. But how is that necessarily related to more VCC side sustainability piece? It started with an introduction to the Green Fleet at NAFA, and my friend Tom Johnson challenged me to learn more about it. At UVA, at my orientation, I was directed by Associate Vice President Don Sungren to deliver a high-value fleet that was a role model of efficiency for all institutions of higher learning. On day two at my orientation, I met Dana Schrader, who is in the Office of Sustainability at UVA, and she encouraged me to look at sustainable fleet transportation. And it was a topic that I was not very familiar with, so I had to start learning what other universities were doing. In 2018, I traveled to the University of North Carolina with another staff member because I heard they had small electric vehicles on campus that I thought might work well in our environment in an effort to decarbonize our fleet, to remove ice engine vehicles and replace them with electric vehicles that would still allow them to do their job and it could also reduce our carbon output. 
going along with being a model for other university fleets or, you know, looking to other universities as examples, I want to talk a little bit about UVA sustainability plans that aim for a significant reduction of carbon emissions by the university. In response to the first edition launched in April 2016, you said, quote, reducing our fleet's emissions helps move the university toward meeting those goals, including a commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 25% below 2009 levels by 2025. So that's a lot, but I was curious to two things. How was the 25% number decided on? How was that settled on? What sort of metrics were you guys looking to? And how can your fleet's role in the UVA sustainability plan be a model for other university fleets that are looking towards sustainable, more clean transportation initiatives? You're right. That is a lot. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's good. So at that time in 2016, that plan was crafted by the Office of Sustainability. I was actually one of the people in the room when they started doing that, being asked to be there as a partner from the fleet transportation aspect for UVA. And that was really the launch pad for us. As in, in when I say us, I'm referring to the FM fleet or the facilities management fleet. Right. I did not come up with the plan. <laughs> I credit ourselves in the FM fleet of being great followers. So learning what other people are doing and then starting to implement those incremental changes. So when the Office of Sustainability spoke towards these lines, that was where we really started to educate ourselves and to learn about these other ways we could do our job with electric vehicles. That was that effort when, I, when we went down to UNC. We spoke with the frontline staff there that were using those electric vehicles and asked them what it was like to get an, an electric vehicle as opposed to a, a gasoline engine vehicle. And their response sealed the deal for me. It convinced me we were on course. The driver of that vehicle said, I wish I had this vehicle 10 years ago. Wow. And they spoke to the fact that it was easier to get around grounds because it was more compact. They were able to carry all their tools. They didn't have the problem they had with parking larger vehicles. So for the operator of the vehicle, it allowed him to be more efficient. And that goal again, that directive that I got from our AVP, that was always in the back of my mind. It's how do we become more efficient? How do we follow what the Office of Sustainability is leading us towards? And, and how do we also share that knowledge with other universities. So to the second part of your question, we work not to brag on what we've done, but to help other people to model the way. So we're constantly looking to engage and discover these new technologies and then to also partner with these other agencies. At these yearly conferences that NAFA does, or there's a Sustainable Fleet Technology Conference in Durham next week, you meet with your fellow colleagues, your other fleet managers across the country, not only in municipalities and cities, but also in universities. Right. And there you share your ideas and you learn to what they're doing well, but you also learn what their pain points were. And then you might be able to avoid the same pitfalls and be able to greet younger fleet managers and help encourage and educate them so that they can make better choices. That's really inspiring. It's more of a collective effort than anything else. Yes. Going off of that, how would you say that UVA's fleet adds to the Charlottesville community, goes outside of university bounds, or even broader and goes to the state? We engage with uh, community fleet managers. There's a green monthly fleet managers meeting with the city and the county fleet managers where we discuss exactly what we're talking about. Green initiatives, funding opportunities, grants, looking for ways that the other organizations have made progress on their goals towards fleet decarbonization. Within the last couple years, one of the areas that I've worked is to help make electric vehicle fast chargers available. And through a grant from Virginia Clean Cities That's fantastic. <laughs> and the DEQ, we were able to receive the first DC fast charger and get it installed in our central garage. Oh, wow. And it's available not just to UVA, but to the public. Since then, we've been able to receive three more, two more which were installed here at UVA on grounds, and the third, which is currently being finished up down at UVA Wise. So the goal was wow. not only to put them here in place, but to also stretch our footprint, our impact across the state, across the corridor, to make electric vehicles chargers available where they weren't before. And that, due to a great part, was due to Virginia Clean Cities. 
And that's fantastic. Um, of course, we love to hear that, <laughs> Virginia Clean Cities. Just for those listeners who might not know, do you mind going into a little bit of what a DC fast charger is and sort of the significance, just very sure. broadly speaking? Yeah. So there are three different levels of electric vehicle chargers. Level one is 120 volt, and that's the same thing you would plug your vacuum cleaner in. It's gonna If you plug a normal vehicle into 120 volt current, it's gonna take you 24 hours to charge a discharge vehicle up to about 80%. A level two charger is gonna be 240, 208 volt. It's gonna be more robust, and the charging time for a, a typical EV would be reduced from that 24 hours down to about eight hours. And then a DC fast charger uses higher voltages and it can take that same vehicle and reduce that charge time down to maybe three hours. So it's all about how quickly you can get the vehicle recharged. And those DC fast chargers are the most expensive to install. Right. And that's why grants and initiatives like you're talking about are so, so significant, especially rural regions like, you know, UVA wise, West Virginia is a very rural region of Virginia. So it's really important, significant that we get these chargers out there. So the work Absolutely. that you're doing is incredibly important. Thank you. Speaking of stuff that you're proud of, though, uh, <laughs> what are some initiatives that you feel the most proud of during your time as UVA's fleet manager? The teamwork that has happened with UVA professor Brian Park in the School of Engineering is probably the most significant thing that I've worked on in my time here at UVA. For four consecutive years, I've been in the classroom with Brian and his students. And from there, we forged this partnership where we developed a driver training program that was specific to UVA. Based off our telematics data with his students, we built what we believed was the first safe and sustainable driver training program. And it, that was recognized by NAFA as the best special project in North America in 2021. But working with professors and students to raise the awareness of sustainable fleet technology is far and away the greatest honor or privilege that I've had a chance to be a part of. And that partnership was just honored by Governor Yunkin with a Environmental Excellence Award earlier this year. So working with Professor Park and his students has been truly one of the highlights of my career. Absolutely. That's the award that you also won the Who's Building Bridges Award for? Correct. Right. That's a fantastic award as well, because Jim Ryan came out and spoke about it. Um, yes. There were many different agencies across UVA that get recognized every year, and that was truly a highlight of, of my career as well, too, to be recognized there. So, again, it speaks to that work that the team does and that we've worked together with Brian Park to help raise that awareness of sustainable fleet practice and safe vehicle operation. Right. That's fantastic. I was going to also ask, what does the future of clean transportation at UVA look like to you? Big question. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really one of those questions where you, I would have never guessed that transportation would be where it is today. If you had asked me 15 years ago that I would even consider driving an electric vehicle, I would not have had that opinion. So I don't believe that there will be a single fuel source in the future. I believe there's potential for whether it's going to be hydrogen, whether it's going to be better battery designs for electric, whether it's going to be renewables, I'm not really sure. But I don't see just a single source of fuel powering our vehicles. So I do see the use of AI with helping with route planning. That would help with the reduction of the number of vehicles on the road. This past month, I was at a, a local agency that does robotic vehicles, looking at that technology on how it can enhance the safe operation of vehicles as it travels across grounds. So this is a special place, and if we can lower the impact of our presence on these roads to allow it to be a quieter time for the students, it's something we should really look at on how we do our job better and reduce our impact on the local roads and, the, and in the community. That's a really interesting interesting point about the AI specifically. I feel like there's a lot of potential there for another, like, who's building bridges <laughs> sort of thing. I know a lot of folks in the econ or math departments are really, really interested in the future that AI holds for their disciplines, and I can't imagine clean energy would be any different. That's the, another aspect that has being engaged with the students has been another highlight. This summer, I was asked to mentor two students in the UVA Decarbonization Academy. And again, working with these students today and allowing them to go forward is going to extend my circle of impact beyond my days. So getting that chance to help share my experiences to these engineers of tomorrow is a remarkable privilege as a staff member at UVA. 
Absolutely. That's really important. And also, I mean, the emissions decrease is impacting not only UVA, but Charlottesville Air, Virginia Air, and the greater nation. So that's also incredibly significant. On to the next question. So like you were talking about, like I was talking about before, UVA's fleet has consistently ranked in the top 100 green fleets by NAFA, the National Association of Fleet Administrators. So what are a few of best practices that you've implemented in your fleet that may inspire others to become more environmentally friendly, similar to my question about universities and broader impact? So there's the 100 best fleets by NAFA, and there's also the Green Fleet Awards by NAFA. There are two yes. different agencies. For the past five years, we've been in the 100 best fleets and in the Green Fleet Awards. The most significant adoption that we have implemented within the FM fleet has been the use of telematics or GPS technology. If you are not measuring something, you have no way to manage it. So that gives us this tremendous tool to understand what our vehicles are doing so that we can in turn then manage them and make impactful corrections. With that driver training program that was developed with a tremendous amount of other input by other staff members, Sandra Smith was an incredible part of the management of that whole process where we built this program. We were able to reduce our idling and we were also able to reduce our safety infractions because we were studying the data and then we were giving this telematics tool to their supervisors and managers to be able to allow them to help coach their drivers. We didn't pick an off-the-shelf program that was already made. We picked something that was specific to the actions that we were taking and then building off of there our training program on what the specific shops needed to do in order to increase their safety score by decreasing any safety infractions that were incurring. That was highly innovative, and I've shared this across many conversations with other fleet managers that I run into across the, the country. How did you settle on idling as one of the biggest issues? Is that sort of UVA or Charlottesville specific issue or is it more so worldwide, nationwide? Well, idling is one aspect to the usage of a vehicle that consumes fuel. So the trip that you don't take with a vehicle and still get your work done, that's a great trip. So you look to try and find ways where you can get the job done where you don't necessarily need to use a fossil fuel. But there are vehicles that we have that require the engine to run in order for their implements to work. If it has a service crane on the back of it, or if it has a lift gate on the back of it, those vehicles need to be, need to be running in order for them to be able to do their job. If they don't run the vehicle, when they go to start it, the battery will be dead and it won't work for them. So new technology is coming that is gonna have a electric batteries to operate the accessories and to cut the carbon as well too. We've had a bucket truck here on grounds that uses that technology. So the, the idea again is how do we look for ways to get better? And we started with the, that one electric vehicle back in 2018. We have, I don't remember the exact number, we have a new one coming right now, either today or tomorrow. But it's around 13% of our fleet has been converted to some sort of an electric vehicle, whether it's fully hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or a battery electric. But again, looking to right type and right size the vehicle into the fleet where they're able to do their job well. And then the emphasis is on respect to getting the job done today without impacting the needs of the people in the future tomorrow. That's incredibly significant. Well, we're nearing our time here, our last question, but I just wanted to go ahead and thank you so much for joining me today. These questions are incredibly significant, really important. The work that you do as a fleet manager is incredibly important, like you were saying, especially to the future of our city, our university, state, country, everything, and just super significant. So I just want to go ahead and thank you for all that work and thank, thank you. you for joining me here today. So holistically, is there anything else you'd like to highlight or mention that we might have missed in this interview and conversation uh, just about Green Fleets in general? Any parting words? Education is a huge part of moving forward with, with Green Fleets. And if the privilege here to work within UVA with students has just been phenomenal. The reception that the students have given to want to learn more about it is, is encouraging. And if it's going to grow, if it's going to move forward, there is going to need to be a, a lot more people involved to help move this forward. So I think we're on course right now with uh, the great work that they're doing in the School of Engineering at UVA. 
the great work that the Office of Sustainability is doing at UVA, the great work that Virginia Clean Cities is doing across the Commonwealth. There needs to be more engagement with the public and the community. There needs to be more honest dialogue on what we can do together to help make this happen. It may be that we're going to look at smaller vehicles. It may be that we'll look at hydrogen transportation. We currently don't have any of that technology here, any filling stations for, for those vehicles here, but that technology is out there and it looks promising. The future is exciting for, for the whole world of fleet, and I'm excited to be able to be in it at this time right now and thankful for the opportunity to be able to have your interest in what we're doing and to be able to help spread that word. Oh, absolutely. I mean, by the sound of it, it sounds like it's a really collaborative effort. And I know at least on the Virginia Clean City side, we're trying to also work collaboratively with other fleets, university fleets. We're partnered up in Harrisonburg with James Madison University, so we work closely with their fleet. But it's all really a collaborative effort, and it's all really coming down to community engagement as well. So those are really, really important points that you bring up. I just want to thank you again so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to the Virginia Clean Cities podcast. I'm your host, Ella Scher, and look out for me on new episodes coming soon.